Yo, what is up guys? Guido here back again with another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install lowering springs on a car. So let's just get straight into it. Now the first and, and most important thing is obviously make sure you're getting the correct lowering springs for your car. So this is a 2012 Chevy Impala LS and these are ZZ Performance um, w body lowering springs which work for the Pontiac 3800s and also the Impalas, um, Monte Carlos. They're pretty much they're built on the same uh, subframe and everything so um, these are going to go and drop in and fit amazingly but most important part is just make sure you get the correct springs for your car and also it will differ because some cars have different you know spring setups some vehicles like my car use a mcpherson strut so the spring is actually all together on the strut so you might have to get a spring compressor you know and compress the spring so just make sure you do your research and get the springs that are actually for your car so like i mentioned already these springs go on the strut just like this. This is a McPherson strut. So you're gonna have to go and remove the strut from your vehicle and use a spring compressor, compress the springs and take the cap off and go and fully uh, switch out the springs, which can be more of a pain than a regular vehicle um, with you know other struts and stuff like that that don't use a McPherson strut like my vehicle does. Um, but that's what I'm gonna be doing this video on is basically how to put lowering springs on a McPherson strut because that's what my car uses. And these are the springs that you need for it. As you see, this one's the rear and this one is going on the front. So let's just get straight into the video on how to install these. So I'm gonna do a little unboxing of these lowering springs. As you can see, the package is just amazing. ZZP quality. So as you see, just some information. They, gave, they give you a little sticker, which is pretty cool, ZZ Performance. And as you can see how tightly packaged this is, there's no way for, you know, it to get damaged or anything, which is super nice that, you know, they care about the product. It's not, you know, that's a really nice high quality sign. And here they are. As you guys can see, it's all snaked around on here and just like that. And I believe these are the rears. I'm not 100% sure, but as you can see, they look super cool. Um, they're powder coated red. So, you know, when you get down on the ground, you'll be able to see them on the struts, which is super cool. I'm gonna put these to the side right here. And as you can see, just how nice they look. Awesome, a nice dark cherry red. Here's the other one. Nice. Now, before you go and jack up the car or anything like that, you have to go and break your lug nuts loose. Otherwise, it's just gonna be impossible to take them off. And my car uses a 19 millimeter socket for its lug nuts, um, but obviously that will differ for your car. So you just gotta go and break all your lug nuts loose. And if you have a security locking lug nut, you will need the key for that. So as you can see, I have the car properly jacked up and supported with the wheels off. Please go and look in your owner's manual and see where you need to go and put your jack stands. You can go and put them right here on the pinch frame right here, just like how I have them on there. But go and look at your owner's manuals and see, you know, where you're supposed to put them. But as you see, I have two strong jacks on there and also just with the pressure of the jack, just holding it there. So if anything goes wrong with these jack stands, this will go and catch it. And I went and just took the wheels off. As you see, they're sitting over here. So that is how you do it. So as you can see, I just went and loosened the two bolts that were holding the bottom of the strut on. Um, it just takes a 21 millimeter socket and it goes and removes both of those. And you don't have to put a wrench on any of these. They just stay pounded in there pretty good so you can just unscrew it. So as you can see, you just need to get a big hammer and just go and hit those studs out just like that. So now, as you can see with both of the bolts pounded out with a hammer, um, you may need to get a crowbar and kind of pry this you know, whole knuckle apart. Um, we didn't have to, cause you know, this car only has 42,000 miles on it. Um, but you might need to kind of pry it off. But as you see, it just comes out just like that. Now, once you kind of have the knuckle pried apart, you just got to gum up in your engine bay and use a 15 millimeter socket to undo 
these three nuts right here that are holding the top strut in. So as you see, I have the strut completely removed from the car. It's easy, it just goes and yanks out once you go and undo the top three bolts. Now we need to get a spring compressor on here and compress this spring. And this is probably the hardest part about this whole job. So make sure you take your time with it and be super careful because these things can be deadly um, and you can get pretty injured if you're not using them right. So as you can see, we have the spring compressors completely on there, super tight. So now um, you just have to go and just remove that nut that's holding all this together. And I recommend using an air impact gun to get rid of it. And the size of the nut, depending on your car, mine is a 21 millimeter. So as you see, once you just use the impact gun, it'll just come off straight, just like that. So as you see, um, we have the coil off of the actual shock absorber and we kind of just have the lowering spring kind of mopped up of where it's supposed to go. And now we're just taking off the, the spring compressor off the old one to put it on this one and put the top cap back on. Now that's going to be a lot easier putting it on because this is a smaller, shorter spring. So it's not going to um, require to be, you know, tightened down as much as that one was, but yeah. So as you can see, we slid the new spring on with the spring compressor on it. And once that's compressed all the way down, you're able to go and slide your top cap and everything that came off the actual strut assembly itself back on there. Just with your car, it's obviously going to differ, but make sure everything's in line with how it came off of the actual vehicle. So now you just got to go and snake that up back up into there, just like you did when you removed it and tighten it all up again. So as you see, we have the strut completely installed exactly how it's supposed to. It just slides up in there and it's just the reverse. You just slide your bolts in and put them the nuts on and torque them down to 100 foot pounds and up here as you see we have the three nuts installed just go and tighten them tighten them down where you know they're pretty snug and as you see it's completely done now you just got to install your front wheel again and now we're going to start on the back so as you can see the front's completely done the wheel is done and torqued and it's completely installed now we got to go to the rear and pretty much the opposite just have to go and undo these two nuts here one here and one right there just like the front and you have to undo the rear uh end link right here which is this one bolt here okay so as you had as you guys can see um we had to remove the brake caliper just so we can get enough ledger leverage to pound these uh uh, bolts with the nuts on it and this is just like the front um, it's a 21 millimeter and you don't even need a wrench on here or anything it stays in there you just need to undo the nuts and to undo the caliper um, as you see these are the two caliper bolts right here right here that just come out and that is a 13 millimeter socket right here which removes the caliper bolts and then you just have to go and pop the sway bar end link out which uses a 15 millimeter socket and that just pops out straight just like that so now everything's pretty much out except we just need to pound these out a little bit more then you need to come up in the trunk and it's kind of hard to see i'll get the light in here in a second but you just got to take out your interior panel so you can access the bolts the nuts up there for the shock so as you see the little plastic trim that's back here it just pops out with the plastic nuts that are on there you just unscrew them same with right there on each side and then this uh whole interior panel just pries straight out just like that and then as you can see back up in there you have access to all three of the nuts and if anyone's wondering there is a little uh rubber cap that goes on top of that that just peels straight off which we already peeled off so now you just have to undo all of those right there so as you see we have the spring completely out it is a pretty big hassle trying to get it up out of this whole area especially when you have to climb up in the back and undo the three nuts that hold the top on um but i recommend getting a ratcheting uh wrench and it's a 15 millimeter uh for the nuts and then it just comes out and it's the same process just get your spring compressor on here compress the spring and i recommend using a air uh, impact gun to go and um take that top nut off and then basically the opposite of you know taking it off just slide the new spring on with the compressor on it and then just once the spring's compressed, go and tighten the nut back on there and you're pretty much done. And then obviously you gotta put it back on the car. So as you see, we have the spring completely installed the exact way it needs to be. Like I said, it's kind of the same. You just gotta compress it, slide your top cap on, tighten it down and just reinstall it. So as you can see, we have the strut installed. If you come all the way around back, as you see those 
um, nuts are completely on there and installed. It's a real pain trying to get back up in here. I had to squeeze up in here like a little kidnapped child trying to go and tighten these. But as you see, those are completely tight and installed. And now we're just tightening the sway bar end link onto the strut. And as you see, that is done. Now you just gotta tighten those two uh, nuts right there, which are 21 millimeter and that'll go and pull that straight in. So as you see, we have everything completely installed. We reinstalled the brake. Um, we just took it off so it's easier to, you know, go and reassemble. And also we flipped these bolts uh, around. Um, it does not matter which way you have them, but we did it this way just in case if anything ever needs to come off, it's easier to get the hammer in here to pound out these bolts. Whereas here, there's no room. You have to take the brake caliper off. So that is that right there. And make sure you go and torque those strut bolts and nuts to 100 foot pounds. So as you guys can kind of see, the front is lowered. Now it's time to just start on the next side, which is the exact same process. So I'm not gonna bore you guys showing it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because it's the exact same, just flip flop, so. So as you can see, the lowering springs are completely installed on the car. And this is about after a month of just driving around town, hitting bumps, aggressively driving, and you know, they are fully broken in and they have, you know, rested to where it's about to kind of sit on the car and stuff like that. So this dropped the car about an inch and a half all the way around. Um, and I highly recommend installing these springs. They are very, very budget friendly from all the springs that I could see that are for Chevy Impalas or W bodies. And they just look amazing and it really fits the car really well. Now with these when I did install them, the ride comfort is actually really amazing. It made it just a tad bit stiffer, stiffer just because, you know, they're lowering springs, of course they are. Um, but other than that, comfort wise, they are really amazing. Like I said, lower the car about an inch and a half all around. Looks really, really good. Definitely a really good option to go with. Um, that's way cheaper than going with coilovers or any of thing of that nature for this vehicle. And yeah, that's about how it sits on the car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something and how to install lowering springs on a McPherson strut on a W body, Chevy Impala, Pontiac 3800, Monte Carlos, tons of other vehicles that use the same chassis and subframe and suspension. And if you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe and peace.